this would really be useful or interesting or encouraging for a church <laughs> like Audubon. And I said, no, 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 I'm doing Matthew. I, I don't have time to do that. And so I, I pressed on, and then while I was sitting back there, it became apparent to me, it's like, uh, are you going to do this or are you going to press on? It's like, okay, so I don't know if this is right or wrong, but it's like I felt like I'm press on. Noteless up here uh, with just uh, my Bible and and a, and a prayer or whatever. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing this because I, I'm very, very happy, very impressed with, with the church in Ottoman. I know the elders have just had a meeting with one of the leaders from the, uh, uh, the e district, and we are evangelical free. District even of the, you know what I'm saying, many of you were there. And it was very positive. I mean, things are, we're doing a good job as a church. I mean, not 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 me as in, in, in preaching or teaching or whatever, but I mean, what you are, what this church is doing, I want to encourage you. I want to, I want to say this is impressive. This is neat. Not make you proud, but to, to kind of say like you do to a, a, a class or a team, uh, a family or somebody say, hey, this is good. You are doing good. And sometimes I know as a, as a Bible teacher, I teach four times a week. Uh, different places, and people come and people go, and sometimes when they come the first couple times, they say stuff like, oh, that was really good, I learned so much, but after they come like, you know, two, three years, they stop saying, they just show up and leave, show up and leave, they expect to come and learn something. <laughs> I guess I want to take a moment and tell you the same thing, it's, it's like, you are doing a good job, and it's like, I expect every Sunday when I get here to have cars in the parking lot, the sound equipment ready to go, the lights are turned on, the bills are paid, and I walk in, sit in the back row, go up here and teach and go home. And it's like, I, I've learned to expect that. But you understand, that's, that's not always normal. That's not always the way things go. And, uh, and I just want to say, nice job, well, well done. And to continue, uh, there is nothing hidden in my agenda here. I'm not like trying to say, well, was he trying to tell us? I, I'm, what I've told you is what I'm trying to tell you. This is going well. You're doing a good job. The elders are providing good leadership. The, 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 the church itself, the body is providing what we need as far as service and funding and, and, and motivation and discipline and outreach. I mean, you're, you, are, you are doing things in your own communities. You're doing things in your own families. You are the light. Like, like Meg was saying, you know, let your light shine. Things are happening. And just to continue doing that. So as I read these, some of these things are negative in these churches. I'm not like trying to slip in a rebuke by any means. Okay? But uh, there's no rebuke here. If, if you feel convicted, that's between you and God. Uh, but I just want to read this. So we're going to begin in the fifth church, Sardis, because that's kind of what inspired me to want to do this. And if this goes well, we'll go back to chapter 2 at the beginning and march through the other six churches. Uh, but I plan on doing this in the next hour and a half and finishing this whole thing. <laughs> okay, good. At least some, four people are paying attention. And maybe the rest of you took me serious. I don't know. Okay, chapter 3, uh, verse 1. To the angel of the church of Sardis write. Uh, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. Now, what has taken place, if you're unfamiliar with what has taken place here, the book of Revelation was written by John and, and talking about events that were to tr transpire. Uh, the, it's a prophetic book. But before he begins the actual vision in chapter 4, Jesus Christ has appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos, which is off the coast of, of Asia Minor, just a few miles, very close to Ephesus, where John has put in, been put in exile by Domitian. And, and uh, John is going to be there until, you know, 96 AD when Domitian is executed in his senate by the senators and Trajan takes over and all the political prisoners are released and John returns. Nonetheless, Jesus addresses John in chapter 1 and tell us, tells him, I want you to write down these things that include the future, some prophetic elements, but also seven letters to seven churches. Now we know letters like the letter to the Corinthians or Thessalonians or Thessalonia. Uh, Thessalonica, I'm sorry, uh, Colossae, different letters to different churches. We've got them in our New Testament. Those are epistles to those churches. But right here in chapter 2 and 3, we have seven epistles, seven letters to seven different churches that John was, in a sense, the bishop over. I guess that would be a way of saying it. He was the oversight. He was the last of the apostles. He was overseeing these seven churches in Asia Minor that are right very close together. They're, they're right in the same mail route. And each of these letters is written dictated by Jesus to John 
to be delivered to the church. And when it says to the angel of the church of Sardis write, again, I'm reviewing this. This is going to be the case for each one of these seven letters. There's a little bit of background information that we won't have to do again. Uh, the word angel is angelos. It's translated in our English as angel. You know, one of the, the spiritual creatures. But angelos itself means messenger. And my understanding, the way I teach it, and you can do a variety of things with not really too many things, one or two things with it, is I think this is referring to the messenger of the church of Sardis. In other words, this is a letter from Jesus Christ given to John to communicate to the messenger of the church of Sardis. The word is angelos. Angelos is translated angel in the English language. But I do not think in this case it means Jesus Christ gave a revelation to John to write down and then give to an angel, flutter, flutter, angel, who then is going to come and present it to the church of Sardis. One, we have a, there's no precedent for that of angels speaking to churches. And why would the, the king of glory give a letter to a man to write to an angel to present to a church? Understand what I'm saying. I think it simply means to the, to the messenger. Who is, who is making the presentation? Some elder, maybe it's a pastor, it's an elder, some leader in the church, some speaker, that is going to make the presentation. And each of these seven letters is written to, I think, the messenger to that church. Okay. To the angel of the church of Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Jesus begins each letter to each of these seven churches by identifying himself. He can just say, from Jesus. But he, he doesn't do that. He, he describes himself uniquely for each church. Not that Jesus is changing, but he's saying there's a specific at, at, uh, attribute of myself that I want to present to this church. I'm speaking to this church of Sardis as the one who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. It'd be like me saying, I'm, if I speak to different groups during the week, I might be saying, to him who's in charge of the middle school shop, I say to you. Well, I'd probably be addressing middle school students. To him who controls the household, well, that would be a wrong statement. Um, how would I say it? <laughs> to him who is the father in the house, you know, I mean, of the Weaver. So you, you get different attributes of my own life that I'd be presenting. Or, and that's what he's doing here. And he says, uh, to the, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits and the seven stars. Now, if we would have read chapter one, we know what the seven stars are. The seven stars, no doubt about it, are the seven angels of the seven churches that Jesus holds in his hand. In other words, the seven messengers for the seven churches Jesus says, I hold in my hand. In other words, there's a relationship, not a priestly relationship. We don't want to get into that where the leaders of the church are priests or something. But they are, in a sense right here, uh, 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 servants that God, the Lord Jesus, is holding in his hand. That he is, in a sense, got a special relationship with them, not for their sake, but because of their position. He is using them as a vehicle to get into the church. We're going to find out later that they are, those seven stars in this, in this church and in the other seven churches, they are the voice of God in that church. Not prophetically, not that they're announcing special revelations from God, but they are God supposed to be talking to the church through his word, or in this case, through this letter, speaking to his people. He is, they are the voice. The seven spirits we could go back to Isaiah, and the seven, the spirit is, uh, uh, it, it, that rests on the Messiah is described as being the spirit of wisdom, of counsel, of, of understanding. It is the Holy Spirit. Seven often refers to completeness, but the seven spirits here, I think, and you, uh, we're rushing through this, is an indication that Jesus, the seven spirits in the church, are the one, the, is the one who, who sees everything. The spirit is present in the church with the seven aspects, the seven eyes, that is mentioned in Revelation also, seeing everything. So in other words, when Jesus said, watch this, uh, who holds the seven spirits of God, the seven spirits are the, in a sense, the ears and the eyes of God in the church. He sees what's going on, he hears what's going on, and he speaks through the seven stars to what is going on. So in other words, Jesus, throughout these seven churches, is saying, I am there, I have a presence, I am working with you. And there's often the threat of, hey, I might come and move the candle stand away. If you don't cooperate, if you don't listen, if you don't hear, then I might just take your candle stand and move it off to the side and you can keep doing what you're doing, but I won't be there anymore. But this church, apparently, he's saying something positive. Seven spirits, Jesus is there seeing and hearing 
and speaking to this church. There's a relationship he has with this church. 